Are you ready to eliminate your credit card processing fees? Visit www.pairpayments.com and use code Jake for $250 Visa gift card when you join today. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Under Pressure, where we're going to talk about all things business and under pressure. I'm so glad that you can all join us today. Today I have with me, I'm going to try this, all right? Ollie, I'm going to try this. Alamide and Amashan. That was pretty good. Say that right? right. (laughs) All right. Well, I call him Ollie uh, because I'm not very good at pronouncing his name. So happy to have you here. So Ollie, as uh, I'm going to call him, he is the owner and CEO of Elite Shine, Elite Shine, now I understand you guys are in Edwardsville, Illinois. Is that right? Correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Edwardsville, Illinois. They are the best window cleaning power washing service there. I went to the website. Oh, yeah. I saw it, and I know Ollie, so it's got to be true. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> they do window cleaning, pressure washing, gutter service, um, all the good stuff, and Ollie's fantastic he's a great dude so any of you guys out there listen to this and you need some stuff done uh reach out to elite shine ollie is also married he's got a little girl layla who's one year old now that was a recent birthday right like wasn't that just this month yeah last month yep yeah last month okay um he's from st louis missouri uh he's heavily involved in the youth ministry which that's fantastic um I do a little ministry myself from time to time, uh, and he's been in business for over a year and a half. Ollie, welcome to the show. Good to be uh, welcomed. Glad to be on here. Good. So glad to have you. So Ollie and I, we met for the first time, uh, what was that? Uh, Was that February? Was the Uh, IWCA? uh, Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Like January, February. Yeah. It was either the end of January or the first of February. I, I, I can't remember. Um, uh, we were in a group or at a table in a, in a Megan likes, uh, little class that she was doing. Yeah, uh, that's right. And she's fantastic. And we got to talking there. And then from there, uh, we became friends or I feel like, uh, became friends with Ollie and Absolutely. really hit it off talking business. And, and I gave a speech later. What did you think about that IWCA event? Uh, I think it was great. Um, it was my first time being there, so I was a first timer, and um, you know, I've been, I was, you know, I've done the biz, been in the business for a little bit, and I knew that um, there's some key things that I'm missing. So um, <clears throat> I thought that IWCA would be a great place to kind of check that out and look for some of the answers that um, I was searching for. Um, so, so yeah, so that's kind of what brought me to IWCA. Awesome. Well, it was a good time. We went there, like, obviously we were there in Vegas this year. Last year, uh, I was one of the first times that we attended, Berkflow attended um, at the IWCA, and we had a fantastic time both times. This time, I guess, I think they had like some kind of record showing of of, uh, people that were already members, and then a, a lot of people that weren't even registered showed up. So it was a great show. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to get into, into Ollie. We're going to get into elite shine and we're going to talk a little bit about your business. So you've been in business in a year and a half, but I want to back up and I want to talk a little bit about you personally. So, uh, and a little bit about your story. where did you grow up, Ollie? So I grew up in, uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, born and raised, um, uh, just uh, mostly in North County and then later on moved out to, um, the St. Charles, Missouri area. Okay. Nice. Um, how'd you end up in Edwardsville? Is that, is that actually where you live? Uh, yeah, I'm really close to it. Um, uh, it's, there's like Troy and Collinsville and I live out in Troy, um, but just 10 minutes away from Edwardsville. Um, but yeah, I had, um, so I actually, um, lived in St. Charles. Um, and, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm heavily involved in my youth ministry and in my church. And uh, our church um, is a big on uh, planning churches uh, in different areas. So um, I was actually asked to join that team that um, would go out to Illinois. So um, 
So basically, I picked up my life, um, single guy, just picked up my life, dropped it in Illinois. I uh, really didn't have any crazy plans or anything, just knew that uh, I wanted to be there and just serve the community and, um, you know, kind of be a light out there. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your, like your background. So you grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, you know, what was your, what was kind of your socioeconomic status? Like what, what, what kind of, uh, support did you have? What kind of, uh, you know, did you grow up in an affluent family with a lot of money? Were you middle-class? Just give me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, growing up, um, we did not have uh, anything. I mean, we, um, I know from hearing from my parents, they started out in uh, an apartment that constantly got, you know, um, broken into. And then a lot of, uh, a lot of like, um, um, just a lot of uh, crime just in, in that area. Um, but that's the best they could get. And then as uh, I got older and my siblings were kind of coming, we still didn't have a lot of money. Um, parents are not, are not from America, so they're from Nigeria. So there was a lot of dealing with the, um, um, you know, green card, citizenship, all that stuff. So we just always on our toes kind of mentality. Um, so, uh, so yeah, just lower class. Me, my siblings um, have a brother and two uh, sisters. I'm the oldest of <clears throat> of all four of us. Um, uh, but yeah, we were. It was it was definitely rough rough time growing up. Um, always you know having things cut off, uh, never really having any extra ever. So and always needing help. I just remember that being younger, getting a lot of help from my god grandmother and uh, some of the people at the church we were going to at the time. So yeah, not not a lot of money. <laughs> okay, all right. No, I I uh, you know. W- w- I grew up something very similar, a little bit different, but yeah, I, I can definitely relate to you on the, uh, uh, not having much side and, and, uh, never really knowing where the next meal was going to come from a lot of times. So, but that's tough, you know, that's, that's, that's tough. And I, I feel like, uh, you know, where you're sitting now, obviously things are, things are, are changing and you've done something phenomenal with your life. Um, and, and now you're an entrepreneur. So getting into that, like what, what about, what inspired you to start and run your own business? So, um, I actually can think back when I was younger and it was, uh, you know, me and my siblings, and I've always had this mentality that I wanted to, you know, just run something and, and, and kind of start something up. Uh, myself. I remember uh, talking to my mom about how I wanted to start um, get my own bank account so I can start saving and building up. Yeah. But I was so young that I wasn't able to get one. So I got so upset that um, I uh, decided to start my own bank and I called it Little People's <laughs> Bank. And yeah. then uh, asking my siblings, to, like, let's get all the coins out the couch. We got to start somewhere and start building up. Um, but I know I just always had that mentality where I wanted to, um, you know, own my own business. I just didn't know what. And um, then I got um, I had a buddy of mine that I used to uh, work for in the this industry. And I realized I love it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. And I decided I want to start my own business in the community that I was in. So that's kind of what kind of led that way. I always want to do something. Um, so, yeah. That's awesome, man. Started the little, little people business, little people bank. That's, that's really freaking cool. I got to tell you, man, that's, yeah. but that's the, that's the mindset, right? Like, Hey, let's, let's get this going. What, how, how do you get it going? And, um, and, and being an entrepreneur isn't easy, right? Like, no, um, it is not. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I talked, I get to talk to guys, uh, who have their own businesses, obviously through this podcast and then with the bird flow and the companies we work with. So one of the things, uh, I hear a lot is a lot of people were making more money working for some other company. Oftentimes they were making quite a bit of money and then they're like, man, I'm going to go do this thing. So they were already successful working somewhere in some cases. And now they're going and they're having to put up with all this headache of being an entrepreneur. What's your, what's your take on that? Why, why not just go work for, for someone else and make a lot more money and they have to deal with the headache? Yeah, I think, I think it's just, 
I think for me, it's more just the opportunity that being uh, being an entrepreneur brings. Um, you know, I I worked in the same industry for someone else, and I had the best boss I ever had in my life. Um, I had an awesome crew that I worked with. I was getting paid really, really well, and um, I got promoted um, and I got promoted in raises within the year span of working there, like three or four times. Like it was just going so good, and um, but I I kind of. I understood and I noticed that no matter how good I have it here, um, there's a level of opportunity that I will never get to meet if I continue to work for somebody else. Um, So after kind of working and enjoying it, but seeing that like I have different, a different mindset, different goals, and I can't meet it here or can't reach them here uh, at my uh, previous job, I realized like I need to, I need to jump ship. I need to, figure out how to do this on my own and, uh, and start working towards what really matters to me. Um, so I think that's what maybe pushes people to jump ship is just realize like, you know, there's something more that I want to do. And if I stay here, I can't get that. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> At what point in time did your wife come into the the picture here? Were you already, were you already started, had started your, your own business or, did she come into the picture before that? So, so she was, uh, she was already, you know, here. So it's, it's funny. We got married right at the start of COVID and, uh, COVID like it, that, that was, I think it was the season of entrepreneurship. Cause it's, we were kind of, <laughs> I was, I was trying to look for a job that would really take care of my family. And then COVID hit and everyone was just like, Nope, Nope. Sorry. We, we got to downsize. We got to shut things down. And then that's what pushed me to, you know, work, uh, get in the window cleaning industry, uh, working in O'Fallon, Missouri. And, um, and like, she was, you know, I told her that maybe we could start a business with this. I I think this is the season to do it. I mean, we literally, literally don't have anything or any, any other option. Um, and she was really supportive. Uh, she was scared though, cause she's, you know, (laughs) she's more of the, um, realistic, I'm more optimistic. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, but she supported me and she was, basically like, okay, you know, go figure this out. And um, we started to learn very quickly, like, yeah, we're making money, but our lifestyle is starting to change. Like, instead of getting the time that would be good for us, especially newlyweds to get with each other, um, we realized that, you know, if I choose to keep working under this person, under uh, somebody, I wouldn't get the the flexibility and the freedom that I really want to get in the end. So um, she she actually helped by giving me like all her student loan money to help me start the business, wow. uh, which is pretty crazy. Um, but she had some faith uh, in it. And uh, here we are now, um, almost two years into it and going strong. That's awesome, man. Great to have that kind of support. Uh, you know, that's uh, <laughs> if it were me, you know, I think I'm kind of the although I'm very optimistic. uh my wife is more of the risk taker than I am. So I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I gotta, I gotta calculate things and I gotta look at stuff for a little while. And I gotta, you know, I really, and, and I'm not one to just kind of nose dive into things. So, uh, but I know uh, my wife would be very supportive. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that you guys, you had that support and that's exciting. Yeah. And, and, um, and that's important too, especially when you're trying to start this out and you're starting your business. So um so you guys are, are uh, how many employees do you have? Uh, so currently I have two. Uh, I got two uh, guys who are out there on the field cleaning uh, and then me kind of just running the operations and um, uh, dealing with a lot of the customers and seeing overseeing our growth. Awesome. Awesome. In this time um, so far, and, and you're, you said it's getting close to three years in the business. Is that right? uh uh getting close to two to getting close to two yeah okay. we're pretty much right there okay awesome so so far what's what's gone great what's really what's really been going well um i would i would say um i think the support has definitely been really helpful and good i think what's going well is you know um i like to see like my my um uh how do i say it uh my priority uh, priorities list when it comes to what I want from a business or from working is mm-hmm. flexibility is my top. 
and uh, I'm able to do a lot more uh, with, you know, being an entrepreneur. Um, I'm able to get some time, more time with my my wife and my kid and be able to uh, serve our community in a lot of different ways. Um, and that's worked really well because I'm so heavily involved. So like, I love, like I'm big in my business, but big in a lot of other areas where I'm just working and going. And sometimes it just, I, it needs to take my attention and I'm able to do that um, pretty, pretty flexible. Um, I think uh, a lot of things that's working is just, you know, a lot of the systems that we're trying to get down uh, have been uh, working. Uh, definitely can use some upgrading and updates, but overall that's been working really well. Um, and just, uh, I don't know, just getting some time uh, with growing the business and seeking out knowledge uh, that's been going really well. I've been finding some really good resources like IWCA, Birdflow, um, uh, different uh, groups on Facebook, um, and different podcasts like this one has helped me to really invest in the right things um, uh, rather than invest, testing, investing, and then regretting kind of mentality. So nice, nice. Well, and let's land on this uh, this concept. So I've heard you mention. A couple times this idea of uh we'll call it time freedom um you know flexibility of being able to to do the things you want to do um and i think i think a lot of people entrepreneurs the reason they start their businesses is for that purpose right that that end goal absolutely wanting that wanting to be able to to have that time freedom to do the things that that you want to do with your family, with your friends, with your community or your church, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, so do, do you think if you had been kind of not pursuing knowledge, if you hadn't been pursuing um, stuff like this, like you just talked about podcasts, uh, bird flow, all the influences in your life, that are, that are going on right now. If you hadn't started that early on, do you think the way things were going early in your business would, would you have that, that time freedom now, or would you still be busting your butt in the field and doing all this stuff instead of kind of behind the scenes? Yeah, I would definitely say I would probably still be, you know, I'll be in the field a lot more. I would definitely not have a lot of time. Um, even starting this business, I, I had the mentality like, oh, yeah, this is going to be cake. I'm going to start the business. I'm going to have all the freedom and um, everything is just going to work out great. Uh, and my wife being on the realistic side, she was like, I don't think it's going to be like how you're thinking. And I'm like, ah, you know, and uh, she was right. She was definitely right. Um, it was it was hard. It was tough. And I started to realize how much I didn't really know. And that I'm like, I'll, there's, I have so many questions that if I don't, if these questions don't get answered, then I'm going to go under. Um, and there's times where I was worried that I would have to go back to um, uh, fish uh, window cleaning. Um, and actually, you know, there was a time where I did go back because I was so nervous at, at a point where I was like, I don't know. I, I should have did more research. I should have understood uh, different things about this industry. I didn't understand and that did kind of push me to go back for a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think that the knowledge is is key. If I didn't have that, then I would not be anywhere close to where I'm at now. I probably could be even farther if I had some of the knowledge before. Yeah, I'm, and we're running into that. And I'm gonna give a little plug to Bergflow here. Obviously, I work for Bergflow. Uh Ollie has recently become uh one of our clients at Bergflow. And, uh, you know, this isn't, this podcast isn't about Berg flow, but I will say, uh, we as Berg flow are very excited because we're, we're really trying to help people remember like right now, why you started your business for that time, freedom, financial freedom, all these things. And I, I feel like the earlier people can grasp this concept of, and I know you can't, you know, you first starting out businesses can't just expect to go in and, well, I'm going to throw, 500 bucks, 800 bucks, thousand dollars at a business coach and do all this all at the, you know, at the same time in the beginning, but the earlier you can jump in on those, those phases and those stages of learning and getting coached and doing these things, I really feel like, um, that's your, your, you know, that's that foundation. 
Uh, you're building that foundation properly. And the earlier Absolutely. you have the opportunity to do that and uh, get in on that, I really feel like that's a smart way to do business. Is Do you think that's probably accurate? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I've i talked to a lot of guys who are way, you know, I, I try not to be the smartest guy in the room. And I talk to a lot of these um, guys who are million dollar, multi-million dollar companies in the same industry as me. And um, and we're 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 looking at similar things to invest in and see what can help. Um, I, you know, you know, just like in Bergflow when we were at that um, at that um training, a lot of these guys were saying like, man, like I wish I understood a lot of the stuff that I'm getting way before to avoid a lot of the headaches that I um I encounter or they encountered, and a lot of them were really encouraging to me because they told me that like the knowledge that you're getting now, the, 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 the things that you're looking into now are going to save me a lot of headaches and that they're well worth it. And I, that's really encouraging for somebody who's like, there's a lot of stuff out there and you want to make sure you get the right stuff. Um, yeah. so you can be successful and you can continue to reach your goals. Um, and I think, I think that just knowing the right thing can save so many headaches Um, Taking the time and investing to make sure you're getting the right stuff is so important because it, in the end, it, it's, it saves you time. It saves you money and it relieves a lot of stress. Um, I can see that already with just applying what I've, I've learned in the past couple months. That's awesome. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, it's, (laughs) we, we talk about it all the time and you hear it a lot, even, especially even church. So like we're both kind of, you know, uh, involved in the church, um, but even if you're not involved in church, you hear it like, hey, learn from your elders or listen to those that have been through it. Uh, take yeah. from experience all these things. And, and you know, aside from just even bird flow, we're just talking about if you can get that knowledge from someone who's already been through it uh, or who knows more about it, then yeah. absolutely. Why not? Because that you're right. That is saving you headaches and you know you don't have to make this right turn this left yeah. turn the wrong way go the right now you got to circle back around and do something different because you messed that up and it cost you money it cost you time and all these things that people don't think about um but i know t- talking to enough uh entrepreneurial people they have that entrepreneurial spirit about yeah. them and they're like i want to go i want to do this and i'm doing it my way yep yeah. And, and that's fine. That, that works uh, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I feel like if we can just encourage these guys who are newer coming in to say, look, man, whoever it is, wherever you get the help, wherever you find the knowledge drops, go out and find them. Right. Because yeah. uh, I think like you, you're doing it early. And that's I think that's wise. I think these these guys that you're talking about who have been in business. Yeah, OK, maybe they've gotten to a certain point. But with the knowledge that you're getting, you know, they're probably going to be jealous because you're you're <laughs> you're passing by some of these obstacles that they had to crawl over. Right. So you're just like scooting around them thanks to yeah. the knowledge that you're getting. Yeah, no, that's that's very real. I, I shout out to a lot of them because with them going through that, you know, we get the systems, we get the knowledge that we have now. Uh, and we just now just left for us to kind of grab that. For sure. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. So what, what's been the, what's been the biggest struggle so far being an entrepreneur and being in this business, uh, power washing, window washing, and this is personal and professional. What, what are the biggest, the biggest struggles you've had in the, in the two years? Uh, well, um, I would definitely, um, I think the hardest thing for me is I have, you know, sometimes I don't know when to have tunnel vision, um, I, I love when I see opportunity. Um, so like even with this industry, like if I see opportunity somewhere else, like I get really excited, um, it, even with seeking out knowledge, like I get so excited, uh, when I hear something and it sounds really good that, um, sometimes I can be ready to pull a trigger, uh, mentality. Um, and sometimes that could cause me to, uh, go backwards instead of really investing the time to do the research, understand something, um, you know, not just take the first word on whatever you hear. 
Um, so I think that's that can be tough with that kind of just having that mentality of, oh, I, I see this. I believe it can it can go like I just I'm already sold on the mentality uh, and not just stopping and, and, and just kind of, you know, OK, let me really invest in knowing if this is going to be successful or not. I fall, I find myself buying equipment that seems really, you know, great, you know, from the uh, like, and it, they're, they're, it's great equipment, but it's, I'm not in that spot yet to even be using the equipment. And I'm like, oh man, this thing has been sitting in my garage for three months, haven't used it, could have used that money in a different way. So I think it's just, um, I don't know, I think it's just being uh, patient, um, really weighing pros and cons before making any moves. And also, um, I think at first it was, you know, having um, someone that can kind of advise me a little bit. I have some guys that I can reach out to, but, you know, they're, they can be very busy. So it's kind of hard for me to um, get a hold of them. Um, so, so yeah, I would say, I would say just kind of um, just, just kind of slowing down um, is my kind of struggle. Um, and my wife comes in really well. And when I'm not being a, a, a just a, a, just not thinking and not not um, considering her words, you know, that's where I kind of get myself in trouble. Because um, I always have to come back and like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I messed up. And I, I did. I should have slowed down. So, so, yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's funny you you talked about the equipment. Uh, uh, that's one thing I see a lot uh, on a lot of the sites. You know, a lot of these guys they're selling this brand new equipment. You know that they just bought, and I was always kind of like, man, all these guys are getting rid of their equipment. What's the deal? And they're they're not getting rid of their businesses. They're just selling off some some equipment. So I started doing some research on it, and like you say, I found that a lot of guys were going out and they're. You know, they're buying all these fancy trailers with big equipment or the new fanciest, you know, tool, gadget, whatever it is that, that mm -hmm. everybody's using. And, it, it, you know, they're spending a lot of money and it's that anticipation that once they get it, the business is going to come. And uh, I think, I don't know if you were in uh, uh, Kevin's class at the IWCA, he brought yeah. this up and he talked about that same fact about how, and, and he's been on this podcast. He was, uh, he was featured just a couple of weeks ago okay. and we, 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 we talked a little bit about it, but guys have a tendency to do that where they go out and they buy stuff. And, you know, one of the things Kevin suggested there at the IWCA was like, Hey, just wait till you get the work and then go get the equipment, maybe even borrow right. or rent or do whatever so that it can pay for that equipment. And, and that's great advice. Uh, and if you guys hadn't uh, checked out that, uh, podcast with Kevin. He's got some good stuff to say on there too. So, but yeah, I think that's, that's really important is you're right. Be patient, slow down, think about it, weigh the options. Yeah. Is this something I really need right now? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And maybe get some advice from your wife and yeah. listen to what she has to say. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, she, has, she has some good stuff to say. She usually yeah. has something to say. So I, I just need to be a better listener. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, where you're at in, in, in your business, uh, you're, are you, you're probably on this current trajectory of like growth, right? So yeah. what's your next step, um, in your growth, you've got two guys in the field, you're kind of operating things and you've got some freedom and, and movement, but what do you think at this point, your next step is going to be, um, yeah. What do you think that's going to look like? Yeah. So I, you know, I've, that's something I've weighed a lot um, as I'm kind of doing a lot of the operations and um, doing a lot of the um, trying to see how we can grow, but also making sure that our, you know, our equipment, our services is just staying up to par. Um, I noticed that like, I'm feeling a little bit more stretched. Um, so I think right now, like I definitely need, I think I need like someone to help me run a lot of uh, the day-to-day -day operations uh, so I can be out more on um, in a different, you know, um, focusing on a different part of the company, whether that's, you know, growing it, whether that's checking on our uh, quality. Um, so I definitely need someone to help me with the day-to-day. -day. Um, I, I, the goal for this year is to end the year with uh, four cleaners. So I want to definitely double um, the guys that we have out on the field. Um, 
I have I'm a I'm big on the my goal is to kind of double every year. Um, yeah, that's not easy. Um, at this <laughs> point, it, you know, I, I think it's it's doable. Um, but I know that at certain points I'm going to hit very very um, hard brick walls, uh, and I got to figure out how I'm going to overcome it once I get to those points. Um, but yeah, I think that's that uh, generating more leads, finding more ways to um, capitalize on our current uh, clients, um, those sorts of things. Um, basically, just getting more revenue, more capital in. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at as a company. Um, and also, yeah, I think a lot of our um, online presence too. We get a lot of referrals, but I think um, we can do better with our online presence. Um, yeah. A lot of people are searching for what I provide, um, yeah. but um, I'm not always the person that's right there. Um, so, sure, and and you're probably you know right now you're serving in some other roles and you're doing some other things. So it's you know having having like you say getting those right people, the right people in the right places, doing those right things that we you know obviously that we've talked about at Birdflow, but um, regardless, it's, it's still important. And I, that's uh, something we see a lot in business is just when you have those right people doing those things. Um, and, and, and then you add the systems with that, then you really start building that momentum and you're always going to hit brick walls and you're always going to hit those ceilings, but, right. uh, that's, that's what people are there for, you know, where you can kind of reach out and say, okay, well, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. What, you know, what, what is my next step? What am I doing next? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I already have a little bit of trust, you know, issues, um, <laughs> and control issues where I like, I don't like to let go uh, of yeah. uh, certain things because I want it to be done my way or done this way. Um, but yeah, I think I'm starting to learn that if I want to reach my goals, I got to get the right people in here. So that's something that's, that's starting to be more and more evident. Awesome. But the important thing is, you're listening, right? So like you're in this spot and it sounds like you've been kind of early on, you've decided early on that you are going to look and seek knowledge and listen to others rather than, you know, just putting your head down and running through the wall or running into the wall. Right. Uh, you can only, you can only run into that wall so many times. And at some point, uh, you know, it, it's going to cause you some problems. So, uh, yeah, but that that's, and essentially we're talking about wisdom here. You're, you been uh blessed with a little bit of wisdom to say hey mate wait a minute you know there there's some people that i can talk to all around me uh who can who can drop some of that on me so that's yeah. good that's good um so if you had to say like since you're you're kind of younger if you had one big thing one essential like must okay some of these guys who are who are either thinking there's a lot of guys that listen to this and they're thinking about Maybe they're techs out there and they're working for a company and they're thinking about starting their own business like you did, or some of the guys who are in your same spot or maybe just a little bit newer. Um, what do you think, what's the one thing that, that they should do early on as early as possible? Maybe not the first step, mm. but in your opinion, now that you are where you're at, what's one of the first things that, that someone should do there? Um, I think someone sh probably something that's really important is to kind of, I guess, write down why you're choosing to do this hmm. and the goals that you're trying to meet with this, with starting a business. Um, yeah. something I, I can, I can tend to, you know, forget is, you know, why I I started this business, what was the reason I, I did this business, especially when I find myself, you know, getting super stressed out, um, you know, getting, becoming very anxious. Um, and I think those are the times when I kind of forget, you know, the reason why I did this. Um, and that's, you know, my, my reason is I just want to make sure I get as much time with my family. Um, I want to, you know, those mo those moments with them is very important to me. Um, yeah. especially being younger, like my parents, you know, they didn't have the best relationship. Um, I didn't have the best relationship with my, my family either. And I knew I like, I didn't want to be like, I didn't want that at all. I wanted something yeah. different. And, um, 
And I knew that, you know, starting up my own business would help with that. But sometimes I kind of can veer off with why did I do this? And I can let this business become my, you know, almost like my why. Like I started this business so I could have a, a good business. And that becomes like a like my driving force. But then I mm-hmm. become stressed out for some reason. And it's not not really fulfilling anymore. And I realized I just I veered off from my the reason why I'm doing this. Um, and once I get back on track, it's like it's like weight is lifted off my shoulders. I become very efficient. I become very, um, you know, uh, less distracted and more focused on the direction I want to take this. So I think that's a big one. And efficiency, if I can add that, like be very efficient. Um, it's so, so, so important. Um, you don't want to be sloppy. Uh, it just causes <laughs> a lot more problems. So, so, yeah, that's what I would probably say. Nice. I like that. Goals are are so important and and not like you said you you said specifically write them down and and i'd take it a step further and and you probably would agree i think you got to put those suckers where you can see them on a daily basis like yeah specific like what are my goals like i'm going to revenue this much this month and then you work your butt off to get there right yeah uh so setting those goals, setting parameters, being efficient, as efficient as you possibly can through that. I think that's a phenomenal advice for anyone uh, starting out and anyone. Uh, and really you can, you could take that all the way through because every sticking point yeah. is going to come down to that. Right. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, it's funny you said that because like I, I made it a thing where I'm going to look at my goals every day, every time I wake up, just to kind of keep me on track. Um, and man, it's that alone has done wonders with just staying focused, meeting my goals, knowing when to say no, knowing when to say stop, knowing when to say go, um, just by, you know, keeping that at the forefront. Yeah. I, you ask, I've asked people sometimes and I was just as guilty of it. And sometimes I'm still just as guilty, but I ask people, you know, what, what's your goal? And they're like, uh, I'm going to grow. Okay. What what does that mean? (laughs) Like you're going to, you're going to grow. So you're going to pick up one more client. Is that, is that it? Your Mm -hmm. growth, you know, that, so now it's done. You succeeded. What does that look like? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. High five. But it's that, and we talked about that at pivot point, but um, it's that very specific uh, goal that's really going to drive you. So, um, so we talked about the should do let's, let's get into like one that's like, what should they avoid? Like uh, get, as early as possible, avoid this. Don't do it. Yeah, I would, i um, trying to think. Um, I would say, uh, when, you, especially if you're getting, you're getting to the point where you're feeling like you need a, you need some help. Uh, you need to bring somebody on to, you know, you know, help grow your business. I would definitely avoid uh, hiring anybody. Um, I think it's big to make sure that um, whoever you're about to bring on with you um, has the same, you know, similar goals or, you know, their you, your your company can complement their um, uh, aspirations and goals and what they want to um, um, pursue. Um, just because I, I got to where, you know, I hired somebody and, um, I hired two people and it's funny. Um, one was my brother and, uh, another one was my friend, a uh, friend of mine and they're both great guys. Awesome guys. I love them to death. Um, uh, they, you know, they work hard, um, and everything, but their, their goals and how they wanted to move forward in life was not necessarily, uh, matching what I wanted. So, you know, within a few, you know, a few months, they were both gone. They were great employees. It's just, you know, I ended up wasting a lot of training, a lot of time, uh, a lot of money uh, in something that I thought was going to be a great investment towards my business. So I think definitely like make sure you know what you're investing in, whether that's even an employee or like we said earlier, like equipment um, uh, or it's just, you know, anything like really make sure that whatever you're choosing to invest in that is truly going to benefit the company or benefit you 
uh, over time. And then um, also that it's actually worth, you know, doing right now because it may it may be beneficial, but it may not be beneficial right now. So that's what I would say. Awesome. Yeah. Very important to to slow down. And you talked to, uh, you talked about it earlier, being patient, slow down, be patient. Uh, everybody wants and everybody needs help, right? And when they're in that hiring process and you're growing, you got to get people, you got to have warm blooded bodies to do the work. Yeah. Uh, but if they're sloppy, if they're not doing the right things, if they don't care about your, your clients, if, if they're doing all, you're almost better off without them. Right. Yeah. And you know, and even with the equipment, you know, it's the same concept. I, I know I talked about it in the speech at IWCA where if it's me and I'm going to hire you to come clean my windows, uh, I'm going to look at one thing, your professionalism and, and how clean my windows are. But if you show up with all that fancy stuff and your fancy shirts and your fancy equipment and, and mm-hmm. the cigarette butts on my lawn and my windows are streaky and nothing's yep. done right. I don't care about your fancy stuff. I'm mad because you didn't do, you didn't do the job right. You know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that's important on retention, keeping clients or, and, um, uh, yeah, no, that's smart business right there. Yeah. Ollie, what are your final thoughts on this? Um, I don't know. I, I would say uh, as far as like, I mean, I, I really appreciate you having me on here. Um, I'm really hoping, looking forward to uh, really growing and then kind of uh, keeping Bergflow updated with, you know, you know, my growth and how uh, I've grown as a company uh, and as a person too. Um, I'm, I really don't. I don't want just to build an, a great business, but I, I wanted to, I want to also build my character as a person. Um, I think that that's another thing I would say, uh, if anyone's going to start a business and you're ready to pursue something, uh, make sure you hold, uh, hold tight to your, um, your values and your morals. And, you know, cause a business can force a type of change, but you, you know, there's good changes, bad change. Just make sure that, um, that you know what what's important to you and you keep those goals at the forefront um, and don't change them at all. You know, just just stick with with what's going to bring that value that you're looking for to your life. That's awesome, man. Good advice. Good words. Ollie, we are so grateful that you came on with us today uh, and we're going to have you back on. OK, so later we're going to check back in. And uh, we're going to check on some of those goals and we'd love to have you back and talk some more in between now and the next time we have you on. And we'll discuss a little bit about some of these things that uh, your growth and your learning. How's that sound? Is that cool? No, that sounds exciting. I can't wait to share. Awesome. 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 So grateful, everyone. Thank you for listening in. Uh, Make sure you go check us out at bergflow.com. That's our Sponsor that's who's producing this today. Yes, I do work for Bergflow. Thank you for joining Under Pressure. And thank you, Ollie, so much for joining us. We're so glad to have you. We'll have you again. And we'll talk to you later where we're talking about all things business and under pressure. Have a good day, everybody. All right. See y'all.